Howdy there. I guess we're back. Speed is back at the bottom of the helix, and our next clinician lives in Shirley, New York, with an HO scale layout called the Stone Creek, oops, Stone Canyon Railroad. It's based in the 1950s, and Mr. Master Model Railroad number 643. We welcome John Faraka. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm John Faraka. My layout is called the Stone Canyon Railroad, and uh, recently, in the last year and a half, I added a uh, addition to my layout. Uh, the layout is pretty much complete at this point, and this was the last um, expansion that uh, I built. So the clinic is called Building the Beaver Creek Branch Line, and let's get started. So I'll give you a little introduction to the, to the uh, railroad. So Stone Canyon Railroad, it's a fully operational, 100% finished freelance single deck layout based in the Western US. The layout was built in various stages between 2004 and 2018. The time frame for the railroad is 1950s steam diesel transition era. Union Pacific and Santa Fe are the predominant roads on the layout. The overall layout size is 28 by 39 feet, including hidden staging. The main line is 400 feet double track, east and westbound closed loop. There's about 120 feet of hidden staging track. Total trackage is about 1,000 feet. Uh, visible trackage is mostly code 83. The hidden staging is code 100. There's over 100 structures on the layout. Uh, control is DCC. I use Digitrack, Super Chief, Duplex Radio. Operations include passenger, local freight, coal, through freight. Uh, switching opportunities include coal mine, 35 plus industries, large freight yard, lumber branch line, and full service steam diesel engine shops. The shops include 130 foot turntable, 12 stall roundhouse, coal, water, sand, cinder pit, and diesel shop. The SCR has hosted over 75 operating sessions since 2013 and has participated in every Island Ops weekend since its inception in 2014. Here's a track plan. Uh, you can see the layout occupies pretty much my entire basement. Uh, it's a walk-in style, single deck. Um, the branch line addition that we're going to be talking about today is this section up here at the top, approximately 14 feet wide. I'll uh, go through a few photos of the layout. This is the freight yard, Stone City freight yard on the layout overall view looking at the freight yard and coal mine and partial uh, view of the engine facility. I do run a lot of steam, so you'll see some photos of steam engines. Coal mine, small town on the layout called Ryan's Corner. <clears throat> so why build the branch line? Branch line was mainly built to enhance operations. Been operating monthly since 2013 and is, I've expanded the layout once before in 2014 uh, with the addition of the Flat Rock Little Fork Peninsula. The lumber branch line operation serves as an on layout shipper, sending products to several industries on the layout, including railroad ties for the Stone City shops, dimensional lumber for Carl's Lumber and Ward's Furniture, and pulpwood for Engel paper. There are also supply freight cars forwarded to and from the branch line from the transload facility. Lastly, and most importantly, I enjoy all aspects of constructing a model railroad. Designing with CAD. I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm uh, fortunate enough to have some really nice CAD tools at my disposal. Uh, the layout was originally designed using AutoCAD uh, back in 2003. And I just want to go through a little bit of uh, the uh, benefits of using CAD. 
So um, original Sun Canyon Railroad track plan was drawn one-to-one -one scale using AutoCAD 2D software. The software we used to design bench work, sub road bed, track plan, road structures, scenic boundaries, et cetera. All turnouts are drawn to scale based on micro engineering Walters or Pico templates. AutoCAD allows you to draw in different layers and colors. The left image shows only the track structures, backdrop and bench work outline layers. The right image shows only the bench work, sub road bed backdrop and bench work outline layers. Numbers shown are track elevation heights. The sub road bed was printed full scale adhered to three quarter inch plywood and cut out with a jigsaw. The sections were then assembled together and supported off the bench work. This method assured the finished track matched the drawing. 3D solid modeling. Uh, this is another uh, software package that I use in my line of work. Um, you, some of you might be familiar with 3D printing. 3D printing always starts out with a 3D model. Um, in this case, I designed uh, the Elgerta benchwork using 3D modeling software. This allowed me to create individual drawings for each piece of wood. The benchwork took about a week to complete, not the modeling, that's the actual benchwork construction. The Elgerta benchwork allows for freeform design by varying the lengths of the joists. The joists are mounted every 16 inches. Most are not shown in this view. So this just kind of gives you an overall idea of the, uh, the skeleton bench work, the Elgarter bench work. Planning and CAD layout. So this is my uh, drawing, my CAD drawing of the branch line. Branch line measures approximately 14 feet by two feet. The depth of the bench work tapers from 24 inches to four inches left to right. This allows maximum aisle space to be utilized. Minimal aisle dimension is 24 inches. There's ample space between the branch line operator and road crews. Turnouts I used are number six code 83 for microengineering. Track is code 83 Atlas Flex Track. I used pre-drawn turnout templates, which allowed me to play with different track plans in CAD until I was satisfied. Once the CAD track plan was complete, I plotted the plan full scale on an inkjet roll plotter. The plot was then laid out on the bench work to verify the location of the turnouts and sidings, et cetera. And once I was satisfied, track center lines were transferred to the bench work. Uh, this uh, section is about bench work construction. Construction began with the removal of the existing fascia hardboard and hard shell scenery along the main line. The original extended backdrop can be seen in these photos. I always planned on adding an extension in this corner and pre-installed the backdrop. Construction continued. Uh, using a laser level, I shot a line level with the existing roadbed around the walls. Next, I used construction glue to fasten a pine one by four along the wall, about two inches below the laser line. This acts as a mount for the L-shaped plywood deck supports. These L-shaped supports were made from one by three and one by two pine. They were aligned with the laser at the correct height and screwed into the one by fours. The plywood along the main line is supported with extensions from the existing bench work. Plywood is three quarter inch furniture grade. A single four by eight sheet was enough for the entire project. The branch line ties into the eastbound main line using a Walther's number eight curve turnout. The main line track radius is 32 inch, which matched perfectly with the number eight turnout radio of 32 and 36. So you can see here in some of these photos where I, uh, this is the laser line here. Here's the laser in the front. Uh, borrowed this from my uh, friend Dave Barraza and uh, glued the pine to the walls here to start the, uh, the basic layout of the bench work. The center section of the branch line is supported by an existing bookshelf. I did not want to remove it and it worked out perfectly. The bench top goes over it and is supported with additional one by two screwed to the side of the bookshelf. 
The cutout section of the bench work in the center photo is for the river scene. Other than the bookcase, the entire branch line extension is mounted off the wall and existing bench work. Moving along, uh, backdrop construction. My entire layout pretty much has a backdrop uh, that I built back in uh, the early days of the construction. And I wanted to continue the backdrop along the back of the uh, branch line, especially because it's such a shallow scene. Um, I did consider using photographs, but uh, it wouldn't really have blended well with the uh, painted backdrop that I did back in the early days. So, so these show, photos show the completion of the bench top and installation of the backdrop. The backdrop is supported on one by threes attached to the wall with construction glue. The backdrop is one eighth hardboard sheet screwed to the one by fours. For a finished look, I installed a fascia made from one eighth hardboard painted black to match the rest of the layout. So I used uh, one eighth masonite for all of the backdrop, uh, about 100 feet total on the layout. Uh, it's very versatile material, bends easily, it's, a, it's inexpensive. Um, and I also used it for the fascia and for the lighting valance uh, overhead. Again, a very versatile material to use. Backdrop painting. Backdrop pads with joint compound. Next, I prime the hardboard surface with Kills All Purpose Interior Exterior Primer. This assured a smooth, even surface to apply the finish paint. Very important step in backdrop painting on, on masonite. For the basic sky color, I use white and blue flat interior house paint. Any brand will suffice. Luckily, I had the same blue paint left over from the original backdrop I painted in 2004. I started by rolling on white to the bottom one third of the backdrop, followed immediately with blue to the top two thirds. The most critical step is blending the two colors while still wet. With a wide four inch clean high quality brush, I quickly blended the two colors with long even strokes until the backdrop was deep blue to white top to bottom. This uh, technique I used for uh, all of the backdrop uh, painting I did on the layout. It's very, very simple and creates a very realistic sky. Backdrop painting continued. For inspiration, I found hundreds of photos on the internet of mountains and forests. The most difficult task was recreating the same mountain colors as my original backdrop. Unfortunately, I didn't save any of the formulas I used for uh, the main color of the mountain. So um, after a lot of trial and error, I was able to blend the color seamlessly. It took a while, but uh, I, I was able to actually match the uh, basic mountain color. Mountains were created using flat latex house paint in a gray base color. I then made several lighter colored batches by adding white to the gray base color. These colors were applied to sun facing areas to create depth. Pure white was used for snow. So when doing a, a painting, a hand painting a backdrop, you always wanna start with the most distant uh, scene first and work, work your way forward. Otherwise it'd be very difficult to, uh, to do it uh, the other way around. In some places, my backdrop is only four inches from the fascia, so the painted image had to be convincing, even though the backdrop should not be the focal point on your layout. Painting terrain and trees was especially challenging for me. Although I consider myself an artist, landscape painting is not my specialty. I turned to Bob Ross for inspiration and watched many of his videos on YouTube. His simple techniques were the key to creating a visually convincing scene. I used a variety of artist acrylic paints and good quality brushes. I used at least three shades of green for the conifer trees and a variety of yellow and orange for the aspen trees. Since I model fall, I painted the grass and underbrush in fall colors. When I was satisfied with the overall effect, I airbrushed a very dilute mix of white acrylic 
from the tree line up to the mountains to create atmospheric haze. So moving on to track laying. Track installation began with the full scale plot taped down to the bench top. The left photo shows the turnouts being placed over the plot to verify alignments. Once this was complete, I carefully cut the plot line along the track center line and traced the line onto the bench top. The cork road bed was cut from 3 16th sheet and glued down along the track center lines in two halves using Loctite power grab. On this uh, project, I decided to just purchase a cork sheet and make my own road bed. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit cheaper than buying the Midwest uh, pre-cut cork road bed. And uh, I also used it for uh, larger areas uh, you'll see in the upcoming slides. Once the cork roadbed installation was complete, I filled in the surrounding terrain with a layer of sculpt mold. This creates a more realistic looking terrain rather than flat plywood. The sculpt mold was painted with earth color flat latex paint diluted 50% with water. The latex paint is diluted to help it flow better into the cracks and crevices. I immediately sifted on real dirt that had been baked and pre-sifted to a very fine consistency. When the paint dried, the dirt created teeth for additional scenic elements such as static grass and ground foam. Prior to laying track, the cork roadbed was sanded flat. So I like to use sculpt mold um, No terrain, in my opinion, is truly flat unless you're modeling a parking lot. Um, so I use a lot of it on the layout. Um, it's very easy to use. It gives you a fair amount of working time. Um, I paint it while it's actually still wet. I don't see a need to wait till the sculpt mold dries fully. Um, I've been using this technique uh, for since 2004 when I first built the layout. Also on prior layouts, I've used sculpt mold. Photo in the lower right shows the completed track work. All track and turnouts are mounted using Atlas track nails. These nails allow easy readjustment if necessary and can be removed after ballasting. All the turnouts have insulated frogs. I ran a 14 gauge bus under the bench work and soldered 22 gauge feeders to track on both sides of each turnout. All the connections to the bus were made with suitcase connectors. The track was tested diligently for both smooth running operation and dead spots before ballasting. Prior to ballasting, rails and ties were weathered. Real stone ballast was used in a mix of HO and N scale and real dirt. Uh, this is the first time I've uh, used suitcase connectors. Uh, the rest of the layout is all hand soldered feeders to the bus. Um, I really liked using these. They were very, very simple and uh, definitely saved some time. Uh, a little thing about ballast. Um, in the past, I've always used Woodland Scenics ballast, which is actually crushed up walnut shells. Um, they do have a tendency to float when you apply the, uh, the glue. So I've since changed to using real stone ballast. I think it uh, it's, goes on much easier and uh, definitely gives a more realistic effect. Moving on to the scenic elements. Scenery began prior to trek laying in the deepest, most hard to reach areas. My tried and true hard shell method starts with a cardboard lattice hot glued together. I then hot glue brown craft paper to the lattice. And this helps uh, to, so you don't actually see the lattice uh, through the hard shell. Um, over that, I apply two layers of plaster gauze. I use Woodland Scenics rock molds to cast plaster rocks. These were applied to the hard shell with sculpt mold The final application was a layer of sculpt mold to blend in the castings and to cover the rest of the hard shell. The castings were colored with diluted artist acrylics. Raw and burnt sienna and raw umber were the primary colors. Those colors are used throughout my entire layout 
Um, I feel that uh, to make a layout tie together, um, it, you should try to use uh, the same base color throughout unless you're modeling different areas of the country within the same layout, but uh, I'm not. I'm mainly modeling Western US. Uh, the remaining hard shell was painted with flat latex paint and colored with acry acrylic washes. Scenic elements continued. Ground cover is a mix of real dirt, ground foam, twigs, sagebrush, and static grass. Trees and shrubs are a combination of commercial bottle brush conifers, scratch built conifers, and super trees. Super trees were flocked with fine ground foam in fall colors and secured with unscented hairspray. Shrubs and underbrush are leftover super tree scraps. If you use super trees, um, you usually get a lot of uh, loose pieces and uh, don't throw them out. They're very valuable. Uh, you can use them in a lot of different areas for shrubs and uh, under shrubs and in, in forest scenes or just about anywhere on the layout. Uh, I further enhance static grass by dry brushing artist acrylics on the tips of the grass. This simulates burnt grass, flowers, etc. I scratch built the tree stumps from pine dowel and colored with acrylics. One thing I like to do with uh, static grass is um, like I said, enhance it a little bit. Uh, I take artist acrylic uh, paint full strength and very lightly dry brush the, the, the tips of the static grass af after it's dried, obviously. Um, you can use uh, yellows or reds for uh, simulating flowers. Uh, it's a really nice little uh, trick to enhance your static grass. <clears throat> Modeling water, excuse me one second, take a sip of water. A logging scene would not be complete without a river to transport logs. I dedicated an area approximately 20 by five inches for my water scene. I created the river bottom with a layer of sculptimol, sealing the bottom up to the fascia once dry, I painted the river bottom black in the deepest part, then gradually tapered to tan at the shore. That's to simulate depth. Stone gravel and random twigs, twigs were glued in place on the river bottom. To simulate water, Envirotex light was poured in three stages to a depth of about three eighths of an inch. I scratch built floating logs from half inch pine dowels. The log ramp was scratch built from scale basswood weathered and glued in place prior to pouring the water. Um, I've used Envirotex light on all my water scenes on the layout. Um, I like it because it, there's virtually no smell. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, fairly easy to use. It does dry uh, to a flat, clear gloss. So if you want uh, waves or ripples, you'll have to add um, a gloss medium on top of it to get that effect. Scratch building logs. I needed a number of realistic pine logs for both the water scene and for the log cars. I decided it would be fun to scratch build them. Starting with half inch pine dowels, I first dragged the dowel over a fine tooth backsaw. A backsaw, if you don't know, um, is a saw, it's a straight saw that has a reinforced back. Uh, I did this to create the bark texture. This created a lot of fuzzy strands that I removed with a wire brush and sandpaper. For coloring, I painted on a heavy coat of burnt umber tube acrylics that I wiped off while still wet. This left darker bands in the grooves that created a 3D effect. To simulate the bark layer on the cut ends, I carefully painted a ring of raw sienna acrylic around the uh, log to create the, the depth of the, the bark. The river logs were glued in place before pouring the Envirotex light. Scratch building the sawmill. So I uh, searched far and wide for a sawmill commercially built one that would fit 
in the space I had and I really couldn't find anything. So since I've scratch built uh, a bunch of uh, buildings on my layout, I decided uh, to scratch build one. Um, I designed the structure in CAD like most of the uh, buildings I've, I've scratch built and <clears throat> created a scale drawing. The structure was built using scale basswood and scribe siding. The loading dock was also scratch built with scale basswood. The roof is scale corrugated metal um, glued on top of 132nd inch plywood and painted and weathered with acrylics. The windows are from T-sheet. The structure was finished with acrylic paints and weathered with pastels. Sawdust burner is an old plastic kit that I kit bashed, painted and weathered. Um, another uh, item I searched far and wide for and uh, wasn't able to find any uh, sawdust burners. So found actually found one on eBay. It was a very old kit, uh, probably from the 70s. Um, very interesting little model. Finally, operations. Um, the branch, lies, branch line has been operational for about 10 sessions, actually a little bit more now. Uh, since uh, December of 2018. I can operate the branch line with or without a permanent crew member. When a permanent crew member is present, their job is to first sort up to 12 cars to their pre-assigned spots. There are up to four trains that will pick up and set out cars from the branch line throughout the session. The permanent crew member will assist road crews with pickups and set outs. If a permanent crew member is not present prior to the session, cars will be pre-spotted and road crews will handle pickups and setouts. Um, the branch line has been a big hit with my uh, crew. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't had a session here since uh, the end of February. Um, I belong to a round robin group with uh, approximately 10 to 12 members and we operate weekly across about five or six layouts. Um, we haven't operated since, like I said, the late February. Uh, we do plan on potentially starting up the end of this month uh, with um, a social distancing in effect, and uh, we're all chomping at the bit to get operating again. So that pretty much uh, sums up the clinic. If anyone has questions, I'd be happy to ask uh, to answer. Thanks, John. Looks like Speed's having a few issues there with his uh, internet at the moment. Okay. But um, let me, I'll just have to jump over into the chat because I wasn't keeping an eye on it. Uh, there's a few comments in there. Good looking water. Um, a spectacular layout, happy um, that John's presenting. So it's all been taken really well. Uh, sorry about this. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to browse through them right now. Um, your trees. There's mm -hmm. a comment on there. Nice little trees. Do you want to run over those again? How you are? Uh, how you make sure. those? Well, there's several types of trees that I uh, use on the layout. So for conifers, um, I've scratch built uh, a bunch of conifers um, and I also use the standard bottle brush trees, which are, uh, I enhance a little bit by flocking uh, some fine ground foam onto them. Um, for deciduous trees, I mainly use uh, super trees. Uh, those are purchased uh, by at Scenic Express. They're actually a, re a real tree that, uh, not a tree, but a plant that has very fine uh, branch structure. And those uh, are also flocked with fine ground foam. Um, I generally spray paint them first with flat gray um, spray paint and then uh, flock them with uh, various colors of fine ground foam. Okay. Speed, you're back. Can you hear me? Uh, you're a little quiet. I hear you. Can you hear me now? 
yeah, much better. Yeah. Someone asked, someone asked, do you host multiple sessions during each Island Ops? I hope you mentioned Island Ops. Yes. Um, so Island Ops is one session per, per layout. Generally, uh, a few times uh, people have hosted uh, more than one, but generally there's just enough time in the weekend uh, to, to get one session in per layout. Unfortunately, this past uh, uh, April, uh, we were we had to cancel due to COVID. Um, but to to answer the question, generally one layout, uh, one session per layout is uh, the rule. And what what positions do your operators uh, perform? Okay, so um, I have yard master. Um, I have a, a mode of power hostler. I have local freight crews uh, and passenger operations and um, also dispatcher. And how long do you keep them busy with? A uh, typical session lasts about uh, two and a half to three hours. We run about um, 12 to 16 trains, generally uh, forward about 200 uh, freight cars in the session. And you keep it revolving or you have to restage afterwards? Um, partially a, a little bit of both. Uh, some some of the trains, uh, like there's a coal train that uh, I have to restage um, empties and loads. Um, uh, but for the most part, it, it picks up where it left off. It takes, it takes not a long time to set up, right? It's... No, uh, my, my, my restaging takes a, a, a few hours. Someone mentioned you have some nice clouds there behind you. Can you tell us how you made them? Um, so the clouds um, are, again, hand painted. Um, I generally use um, acrylics, flat, which are you know are flat. They're not glossy. I, I do not use any oil paints in in my backdrop painting or anything uh, on the layout. Period. Everything on the layout is acrylic or latex based. So clouds are generally um, brushed on with uh, pure white, and then I'll use uh, various shades of gray to uh, create depth uh, underneath the clouds. Still hand painting? All hand painted, yes. Okay. And someone wanted to know what do you use for supplies for your scratch building projects? Um, so scratch building, the main uh, material I use uh, is basswood. So I purchase um, all scale basswood. Everything I build, I build to scale. Um, for roofing, uh, I use a variety of products, uh, paper cut shingles. Um, um, I've used uh, pla both plastic and aluminum corrugated. Um, sheets to simulate corrugated roofing. Um, but I've also used styrene, but most of my structures are are, um, are scale basswood. So uh, car cards or switch lists for the operations? Uh, we use car cards um, for, uh, for operations, car cards and waybills. Then someone wanted to know if you have a financial plan to build or you just spend on what you need? Very good question. Um, the layout was built over a period of about 16 years. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I didn't exactly have a budget where I would spend X amount of dollars every week. Um, because it was spread out over so many years, you know, I was able to not have to really spend a tremendous amount of money at one time. Probably the biggest outlay was for track, initially for track and uh, control. Um, you know, all the turnouts and track and DCC, um, that's probably one of the bigger expenditures. Structures were added gradually over the years. So even though I've got well over a hundred structures, they weren't all purchased at the same time. So 
you know, it's just a, a gradual progression. Um, so you, you try to spread the money out over time. Tom wants to know what passenger trains do you run? So I run um, roughly three passenger trains. I run uh, Super Chief, Santa Fe Super Chief. I run a, um, a Southern Pacific Daylight and I run a Union Pacific uh, passenger train as well. I also run a small mixed uh, train. Uh, I call it the mine run. Uh, basically brings miners uh, up to the mine and back. That's just a, a single um, car run. So where did you get got inspired to do this branch line? Uh, mainly operators. You know, my operators, um, we're always looking for, you know, new ideas. And uh, I had a spot on the layout that literally from day one, I knew I wanted to put something there. Um, it took 15 years before I finally decided. And I liked the, the branch line, the lumber branch line was a good choice because I have lumber industries uh, on the layout that I can service um, I have a paper mill that could use pulpwood. I have um, a small lumber company and a furniture company that could uh, use uh, uh, lumber. And uh, it just was a good fit and uh, it worked out nice with operating. Neat. Now, I don't want to give away the people that live in your backyard. But they're asking, uh, is there any purpose for a good laser level? <laughs> I think I know who asked that question. Um, a laser level is a very, very useful tool. I wish I had one when I built the original part of the layout. Um, the laser level allowed me to um, basically line up the existing track height to the entire branch line that I built so that I, that I knew the, the track would be perfectly level uh, coming off of the main line. So yeah, that was a very useful tool. Is your, is your camera attached to your computer there or is it built into the laptop? No, it's separate. So I can, I can, can, you, can you pick walk it up around and... if you want. Yes, please. Okay. So this is the branch line. Um, start over here. This is the lumber mill. There's three sidings here, um, which take uh, pulp of cars. And there's a flat bed car there that uh, has railroad ties and you know a few other uh, box cars. There's a uh, tanker there for, for fuel. And back here is the, uh, the lead track that uh, comes off the main line. Over here, I have a, a runaround track. Just a quick question. Is that lumber mill built, built on something very typical or, or something in the West? Uh, it's kind of my own, came out of my own head. You know, I, I, I just kind of based it on some structures I've seen. Uh, again, it was mainly built to fit the, the, the scene, uh, you know, the, uh, the size of it. Um, you can see here some of the backdrop painting. Um, probably the most uh, challenging part of this build was the backdrop. Uh, I was a little terrified because if I didn't get it right, it really would ruin the effect of, of depth. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised um, that I was able to pull it off. It really does give the illusion of depth. Beautifully done. Thank you. And here's the, the water scene with the logs. A small little logging camp here. These are um, commercial uh, craftsman kits. They're all wood kits as well. And then this is just a, a, a backtrack here to 
basically simulate the uh, the track that goes up into the woods. I'll show you a little bit more of the layout. This is um, town of Red River, basically a, a, a mid-sized town. There is some switching activities in here. There's a couple of uh, structures in the back. There's an RA, REA express agency, mm -hmm. grocery distributor, and off in the distance, there's a, uh, a feed mill. Over here is, um, this is a peninsula that I added in 2014, right after I started uh, operations. This uh, added a tremendous amount of uh, operating to the, to the layout. Uh, previously, this part of the layout ended back here by the, uh, the roundhouse. So this part of the layout has 13 industries and uh, just a whole lot of switching opportunities. And there's a lot of ac activity that happens here um, during the operations. Someone here is screaming to see a roundhouse. They want to see a roundhouse? All right, I'm going to have to move my uh, setup a little bit. Hopefully I can reach. Probably about as far as I can get. So this is um, the roundhouse, 130 foot turntable. Uh, this is all Walther's uh, modern uh, roundhouse edition. This is a first edition uh, turntable. Uh, when they first came out with it, somewhere around 2005, 2006, I pre-ordered it and. Uh, actually sat in a box for about three years before I was ready to uh, install it. <laughs> it has since, uh, the original um, Walther's turntable were not DCC controlled. Okay. They had a small, um, you had to pre-program each position and it, was, it would only work if it could find uh, a home position. And right. at some point over the years, the home position device failed, it stopped working. So uh, a few years ago, I ripped the whole uh, turntable apart, the bridge, and I, I kind of figured out how all the wiring worked and the motors, and I, I converted it to DCC. So now um, our operators can use a, uh, a throttle to, uh, to operate it. So you select, you select a track or? No, it's it's not that sophisticated. Um, you you do have to align it manually, but I think that kind of adds to the uh, challenge of, of being a a motive power hostler. He's got to be able to line up the uh, turntable without derailing uh, a big boy, which uh -huh. has happened. <laughs> <laughs> These are some of my uh, larger steam engines, big boy and the Challenger. Um, further back is uh, some other features of the service facility, um, coal, sand, water, cinder conveyor. In the back there is uh, the diesel shop, and in back of that is the city scene. Nicely done. Let's see if I can reach a few other areas. This is the... Uh, the coal mine. This is the highest point of the layout, about uh, 52 inches off the floor. And back here is the freight yard. And here are some of the scratch built conifers that I built. I, I built about 80 of them on the layout. I've also built a few uh, for friends uh, layouts as well. So from what we can see here, it looks pretty much done. Oh, the layout is definitely done um, in, the, in the common sense of saying it's done. 
Um, I have no more room to really expand here. Um, of course, I have can spend a lot of time super detailing scenes or doing a few scenes over here and there, but um, the joy I get out of the layout now is operating it and uh, and uh, you know uh, inspiring others. Um, I post a lot on Facebook. I'm in a lot of different groups, and uh, it's definitely very enjoyable for me to uh, to contribute to the hobby. Someone did mention that you're an avid Facebooker with great photos. That's so, one of the things I really enjoy is, is, is photography now on, you know, uh, pho photographing scenes. And um, I've actually uh, purchased some software that allows you to uh, stack multiple uh, shots of the same scene to get, uh, you know, very good depth of field. So they see a lot of that on Facebook. I post a lot of those photos. Another question, what kind of structures do you use for the city scene? Those buildings in the back. The city scene is a mix of, um, so to the left here, those are all downtown deco. There's three of those buildings or four of those buildings. Um, some of those background buildings are actually photographs. They're not real buildings. They're photographs of real buildings that I've applied to a, a, a foam pour base just to create a uh, building. Um, some of them are Walters, some are uh, DPM. Uh, a few of them are, are uh, Walters modulars that I scratch built. Um, the, this whole scene here is also uh, lighted. Um, most of the buildings have lighting, street lighting. Um, this was about a year long project to, to build the scene. I actually built the entire scene off the layout on a, a single piece of, uh, of plywood in the, in the shape uh, of the, uh, you know, from left to right. So two more questions. Sure. Do you have uh, videos of trains running or? I do have some videos. Uh, I have posted videos on, on, um, on Facebook, I, I do not have a YouTube channel. Um, so I, I don't have anything on YouTube, but I have posted uh, some videos on uh, on Facebook. And then uh, last question as we're running out of time. Why do you model the West Coast while living on the East Coast? And then there's a tongue in the cheek, too many new that, Haven layouts already? I question a lot. Um, and some of my uh, operators who also have layouts will probably take offense to what I'm about to say, because a lot of them do model uh, Long Island, the metropolitan area. Um, to me, I find it a little boring. I really, I'm a scenery guy, and I love, I love the Mountain West. I've, I've been out there a lot. I've been to a lot of the areas that I, I tend to model, and I just really like the scenery and um to me it's just more exciting than modeling more urban uh, scenes or uh you know things like that so that, that's the reason it is just one amazing layout thank you wow <laughs> and a really good clinic too yes thank you i've, I've presented this clinic uh, a few other times at uh, some division and uh some uh, regional meets Thank you.